Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Porch Talk. Today, we have a special guest, Lori Baca, and her ministry is The Journey. And so I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did. I did. Yes. I can't even believe we're already into December and um, Christmas is upon us. So I hope everybody's out there doing their Christmas shopping. And we've had a little break with Porch Talk. Yes, we did. We did. And mm -hmm. we ended with an amazing uh, ministry, God's Garage. And so um, we want you to stay tuned at the end of this program. And we have some uh, exciting announcements with God's Garage and some other ministries that we've been highlighting. Yes. But today we are so excited to have Laurie Baca from her ministry, The Journey. So welcome, Laurie, this morning to Porch Talk. Welcome, Laurie. Hi. Good to see you. Good morning. So, we are, uh, we are so excited to have you on Porch Talk this morning. So we're going to jump right on in to start talking about the wonderful things about your ministry. So to, to start with, we would like you to give us a little bit of background about yourself. Uh, about myself, uh, I started the journey years ago. Uh, as a kid, I kind of struggled a little bit with uh, academics. So I, I couldn't connect to reading. So I had a lot of struggles with um, uh, reading and having trouble understanding and cognitively understanding what it was that I was reading. So fast forward many years later, I found out actually by accident that I struggled with dyslexia along with some other learning di disabilities. Now, unfortunately, back then they didn't have the science and they didn't understand all that I was walking through. So they would use words like slow or special or those types of things. They didn't have the, the background for dyslexia and other types of learning disabilities. So as I started to learn about, it was more about how I learned and how I took in information. Um, I really, it really took that in and it kind of parted the clouds for me and opened up a whole new world. Um, so I, after being in education for so many years, I, uh, I started noticing some struggles with uh, some of the students too. So I started to move toward um, uh, putting tools in place for them to help them work through that as I had walked through that myself. Awesome. Well, that's awesome. I know um, dyslexia is, um, a, you know, it's amongst many people, many families deal with it. And I personally know some people that um, they were diagnosed with it later on. You know, they didn't understand what their struggles and frustrations were with their children, you know, and later on. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your Kairos moment that you experienced 20 years ago. Wow, that was quite a moment. I remember uh, I had been, my pastor at the time was doing a series on purpose. And so I was having this conversation with God on my way to work in my car. And it was one of those Kairos moments where the air gets thick and all of a sudden I'm kind of mentally transported elsewhere. As I'm driving, <laughs> I was keeping my eyes on the road. But what was interesting about that conversation is after I had had that conversation with God, I ended up in the parking space at work and really did not remember how I got there. Wow. So what the conversation was, I started talking to God about purpose and my purpose at that time. And of course, he asked me the question, my sweet Holy Spirit, well, what, well, what, what do you love? And I think they didn't already know. <laughs> and, and I said, uh, well, you know, I love these kids like you love these kids and, uh, and the struggles they walk through, I can identify with. And he says, well, there you go. There's your purpose. So it was one of those conversations that, okay. <laughs> so from that moment on, God really spoke to me about through a lot of vision. He speaks to me a lot through vision. And so I started putting things in place that would happen, uh, that would help our students walk through their journey. And I also understood that everybody's journey is different. No one is the same. Sometimes we get caught up thinking we should be on someone else's path when in fact there is purpose behind our own path. So I started noticing patterns with these students that, um, really their struggles had to do with their identity and understanding their purpose in life for God, for God had it, for God's, God's purpose for their life. Sorry, I got lost one time. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. So 
when uh, when you were you, you got your attention kind of got caught in college because you um, you noticed these patterns in in the students and it kind of led you to start looking more into molecular biology and so maybe you could explain a little just a quick little uh, description of what molecular biology is and, and what you learned. Well, molecular biology is really simply just looking at stuff uh, through a microscope, a microscope that the eye cannot see. Okay, so it's kind of like looking inside your head, magnified like a quadrillion times, so that it's like a Horton hears a who. If you know Dr. Seuss's story, uh, there's like this little world that exists on a on a dust ball um, that no one else believed was there, but Horton, if you know the story, Dr. Seuss Horton knew somebody was there because he heard them. Um, but uh, looking molecularly, that's what we're looking, magnifying, intensifying inside what's going on and how God wired us inside our head. So that's unless, you know, what molecular biology is looking at it at a molecular level what the eye cannot see. So, the, the, so I started asking God as I was teaching psychology, I really didn't wanna teach just psychology anymore. I wanted to teach them about Jesus through psychology. So I asked the Holy Spirit how to do that because I was seeing uh, their papers, students would write, were all about trials they were, they were going through, which is okay to write about, but there was no resolve. And that really got to me. There was no resolve in their writing. It was just, it was them stuck in their story. That's one of my catchphrases I use there. People get stuck in their story. So I asked the Holy Spirit, how can I lead these people to you through psychology? Well, as I was preparing a lesson one day, looking at stuff at a molecular level, and we'll talk about that in a minute, as far as uh, our, thought, our thought process, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit started, as I'm watching this video that I show my students, the Holy Spirit just kind of wrote on there in the middle of my video, Romans 12. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so uh, all through my lesson plan, he started to give me scripture and connect the dots, what's happening on a molecular level with what scripture says about how God wired us. So how he wired us is uh, uh, what they call in science optimum bias, but really that's wired for love. God wired us for love. So he gave us everything we need to do what he purposes us to do. Wow. You know, you talk about, um, you've mentioned before to Kim that you went to a Carolyn Leaf conference and we both have seen her YouTube videos and conferences and her study. And it's really profound and amazing. I can only imagine um, with your background and what you're doing, how much she impacted your life. You probably were just sitting on the edge of your seat like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, right? You know, I can only imagine yes. because connects like God probably just put her right before you, right? To connect the dots. Yeah. Sure about yeah. that. So, you know, I'm sitting there. I was so excited about this new information the Holy Spirit was telling me that I started teaching about it in small groups, life groups. And as I taught and showed them some uh, some video clips of what's going on on the inside, somebody says, that sounds like Dr. Caroline Leaf. And I said, well, who is she? <laughs> well, amazingly enough, I started researching her and many other scientists, and they work with what's called epigenetics, epa meaning above, genetics. So it's it really is when you translate that down it is mind over matter it's simply mind over matter it's your mind that controls your your biology everything about you it's not the brain the other way around it's not the brain control it. it's the mind that controls it so uh i was so excited i i researched a winter in a conference and oh my goodness it was one of the, another one of those kairos moments where i was so overwhelmed it was like I was so excited about the, what the Holy Spirit showed me, but once I attended her conference, it was like steroids. <laughs> it was so exciting that I just couldn't hardly take it anymore. I mean, three different times I wanted to crawl in the corner and weep just because of this enormous, amazing information. And it was my, everything inside me was saying, you've got to get this story out. You've got to tell people because this is the genesis of where their identity stands and not in all this worldly stuff. 
So uh, it was it was overwhelmingly amazing. It so much so that I came home and I completely changed my curriculum <laughs> to talk about mind over matter epigenetics, which leads people to the truth about how God wired us. Wow. Well, and <laughs> so this is all about mindsets. Yeah. And we know that, like you said, in Romans 12 too, it says renewing our mind. Can you tell us, can you talk to us and, and talk about mindsets? And, um, and I know you have some things you want to show us too. Yes, I do. So this is my favorite part about teaching is I, I like props. So I bring props. So just to, let's go on a molecular level real quick. So what they say in science, what wires together, fires together. So there's, if you can imagine my hands are a thought. So there's a thought. Okay. So it's two neurons connecting, kind of like plugging in your cell phone, okay, to charge. So there's an electrical magnetic charge that happens there. And that's a thought. Well, with every thought, you have an emotion attached to it. And so uh, emotions are really, we operate out of two emotions, love or fear. And, you know, God did not give us a spirit of fear. So, but fear can be masked by things like fear or depression or anxiety or all those other types of negative things where love is love right? So we have mind over matter is choosing the love. In Deuteronomy, for example, we choose life or death. So God gave us a way, molecularly wired us a way that we get to have this choice. And so what that looks like on a molecular level is mindsets are a cluster of thoughts that you have over time because that relationship does not change. It stays there forever and ever, okay? So over time, there is a, a glue we'll talk about in a minute that's called neural growth factor, and it kind of sustains that. And so that does not know to change on its own and stay there forever and ever. Remember, you have an emotion attached to it, and you have uh, a memory also with that emotion, okay? So if it's a bad one, you thought you might have forgotten about it, but it's still there because it holds memory, right? And it is in your subconscious. So we walk out of our subconscious more often than you think. So without thinking about it, something that we don't know that's there, like maybe an old memory, a hurtful memory we walk out of, okay? Because remember that relationship doesn't change on its own. Um, so sometimes if it's a bad memory or a bad thought, uh, sometimes we can get stuck there. This is where people get stuck in their stories. So it creates a cluster uh, over time you can build on this. And so I want you to think of like a forest, a forest of these, uh, neural networks, they call them. If you think about either a forest or broccoli. <laughs> okay, so it's like, and they actually take up mental real estate in your brain. So it's a, a forest. So what happens if you're not careful with uh, choosing life or death, that, that the moment of choosing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a real cool trick on how to do that. Uh, here's, here's what uh, happens on a molecular level. So if you can imagine this plant for a minute. And this is what I would think of as a healthy neural network. It's a bunch of thoughts, but it's good thoughts. It's stuff that have emotions attached that are good uh, to it, okay? So this is kind of like a healthy neural network in your brain, okay? Now, what happens when we get stuck in our story or we have those thoughts, okay? They look more like this. This Ooh. is a toxic thinking. So kind of like a burnt Halloween tree. And this is what happens over, over time. Like our neural networks, you notice the branches are thick. Well, you could feed that. Like, let's say, for example, back then when I was struggling, someone says, you're slow, you're stupid, you're retarded, were some of the words I used. And so the, that had an emotion to it. Information plus emotion, ow, that hurt. It gets attached to one of these neural networks. And so you walk out of that without even realizing it. So how do I do that? I'll say stuff like, well, I'm not very good at math or I'm a bad reader. Or, you know, I was kind of slow in my class. So all of that, what you're speaking, which is a whole nother lesson about what we speak and what you're thinking, it feeds this, okay? So uh, this, is, this is not good. And we all have this, we all struggle. But the good news is God gave us a way to change it from this to this. Okay, when he talks about Romans 12, he gave us the opportunity. He wired us for love. So that has to do with um, 
that neuro, that uh, neural growth factor I talked about. So the neural growth factor is kind of a glue that sustains that thought. It's a glue, it's kind of like a glue. Um, and the, the interesting thing is that there's not enough of this to go around to all the other thoughts. You've got a quadrillion thoughts going on in your head in one day. If you got all the cell phones in Houston and put them together, that's how many signals you've got going on in your head in one day. But the amazing thing is you don't feel them. They, they ha happen at quantum speed. So you've got a lot going on. And so there's a lot of thoughts going on. Your, your little, um, little microcomputers, the, the thought process, that electrical magnetical charge is like a mini computer going from one signal to the next signal. Okay, it's like a router. And so you've got a, a quadrillion of them. So there's a lot going on there. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Okay, so that neural growth factor, remember I said sustains that, okay? Remember the relationship doesn't change on its own. But when you, uh, when, God, when God said Romans 12, renewing of your mind, what he's talking about is he gave us the tools to do that. So here's how it's done. There's a word called reconceptualize. Reconceptualize means thinking about things in a different light. So going back to my childhood, you know, you're done, you're stupid, you're slow. When I'm, I'm walking out of that without realizing I'm doing that. Well, how do I reconceptualize? Well, when, I, when, when the Holy Spirit showed me the truth about what it was I was learning and how I learned and how he wired me, um, I started to say, well, the good news is I may, I may not understand math, but I know that if I put my mind to it, because I have the mind of Christ, then I can learn. And God gives me all the strength I need to do what I need to do. So that's an idea of reconceptualize, changing it around, looking at it in a different way, that's what reconceptualize means, is looking at things in a different way, okay? So if I showed you a water bottle and it's half full, so would it be half full or half empty in your mind? So the good news with if it's half full, that's a good, that's a good neural network. Half empty might be, well, you, you can switch it around and say, really, it's half full, so I'm blessed, instead of I only have a half a cup of water. So that's a great example of reconceptualization. So what happens on a molecular level is when you reconceptualize, what happens to that neural growth factor, remember the glue, there's not enough of it to go around. So when those other good thoughts are coming in your head, you're reading scripture, you're speaking scripture, you're going back to the Holy Spirit and asking what to do and you're reconceptualizing this, then those thoughts are now become the strongest voice in your head. And what happens, because there's not enough of that glue to go around, they start to steal the glue from that toxic thought. And there goes, when that happens, there goes that I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'm retarded, I'm slow, I'm special. And now comes, I have the mind of Christ, I am a child of God. And you're making those neural connections that renew your mind because there's a not enough of that glue to go around but you can steal the glue to reconceptualize and align truth with your identity, right? As opposed to taking in all that toxicity. So the neural growth factor is an amazing thing how God wired us. Um, what's amazing is that uh, the same thing happens at the point of conception when a, when, a child is con when a child is born, when the egg penetrates, uh, the sperm penetrates the egg, just like in the beginning when God spoke life and there was light, there's an explosion of light in that egg, which is amazing, which is God speaking everything into that individual who he counts the numbers on his head, everything he gave them, everything they need to do what God had purposed them to do already. They don't need to go looking for it. They have everything it takes to do what they were purposed to do. That's and so that's what happens on a molecular level. You have what it takes to do what you need to do, what God had purposed you to do. So part of the journey is getting them to realize that and walking them through their own journey, 
and, and taking them away from the fact that they think they have to be on someone else's journey. Uh, God gave us seven intelligences, you know, and, and, and we each have a thumbprint, but there's a reason why no one has your same thumbprint. God has a plan for that. There is purpose behind that because the way your combination of intelligences is part of the body of Christ. It's needed. It is, there is purpose behind that. So the journey is kind of walking them through this and, and allowing them to see truth so they can learn to walk in who they already are and what they already have, as opposed to looking for it and living in a world of lack. Wow. Um, it's kind of amazing to me how God gave you a mind to understand all that. <laughs> I get what you're saying. And actually, I have to tell you, I've listened to Carolyn Lee and you explained it on a level where I could understand it better. Um, <laughs> I like your props. Um, I had a quick question. I had a quick question, too. So whenever, uh, you know, the Bible talks about speaking life and death, speaking out, you know, the power is in the tongue. God spoke life into existence and creation. So that just tells you how powerful life and death is, right? And so we're, we're called to speak life and not, you know, negative bad things. But my question is, is that when people speak stuff over you, is it, is it at the point that we come in agreement with that thought? Like, let's say the enemy, you know, the enemy puts lies in our head, right? When we don't come into agreement with those lies, does just because that lie is spoken, is it when we come into agreement with that, yes. that we start we to get in? the? That's right. Yes. When we take it in and we receive it and believe it. Oh, yes. So, you know, people often think, well, the devil or whatever, but which is true, he has a strategy. But the fact is, is that most of what we say and do comes from our own self, our own environment. It's the way we think. And so, uh, yes, we come into agreement and we don't. So, for example, as I mentioned, we operate out of two emotions, love or fear. Of course, you know, God did not give us a spirit of fear. He did give us emotions to work through some things, right? Like, you need sadness for grieving. So you need to be able to work through it. So there's nothing wrong with emotions. In today's society, they make emotions like it's a bad thing. God gave us emotions to work through that, okay? We just don't need to get stuck there, okay? So yes, the, the um, you whether or not you come into agreement what's being said. So that brings me to, um, uh, that brings me to, uh, I don't know if I'm still on because I think I lost you guys. <laughs> um, but I'm going to keep talking as if I, if, as if I am. So, um, so one of the kind of catchphrases I use is I tell people, when you get an emotion that you have a feeling about, it's okay to have that emotion. But then you need to put up your stop sign and say, hold on, is that true or not? So I always tell people to go back to high noon. And what that means is... Uh, did you hear me? Because I lost you guys for a while. Yes, we had it. We had a different. We had a disconnection, but we got it taken care of. So go ahead. Uh, you were still talking. I'm assuming the audience still heard you. Okay. But go okay. ahead. So I was describing the the sundial that Romans use in, to tell time. You know, over time. So uh, the sundial cast the shadow certain times of the day, and that's how they told time, right? With a with a sundial. Well, the thing about the sundial is at, at high noon, there is no shadow on the sundial. So I always tell people, go back to high noon. And mm -hmm. what that means is go under his light, go under his covering. Every single time you have an emotion about a thought, and then you say, Lord, is that you? Lord, you know, what, and, and what does scripture say about it? It's like putting up your stop sign with every thought you have, whatever you're bringing in through information, you got to put up that stop sign and say, is this truth? Is this not truth? And say, Lord, or, or maybe you don't even understand it. Lord, I may not understand if this is you or not, but I know that your word says, okay? So always go back to his word. Always go back to high noon. And wherever you're feeling angst, most likely if you're feeling angst, if you're staying there a while, then you're not going back to high noon. So go back to high noon. Because then you're relying on your own ability to handle whatever it is you're walking through, as opposed to going back to high noon and say, Lord, what do you say about this? So yes, you can grab, grab those, those thoughts into captive. It says that in Romans. 
And uh, you can do that because he wired us that way to be able to do it, which is amazing computer. You know, just amazing, amazing science. I'm a science nerd, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you were talking to, when we were talking the other day, you were talking about how our mindsets, when we start getting those emotions and and the thoughts in our mind about how you talked about how it connected to your heart. And actually there's neurons are, we, I'm, I'm trying to speak science when I, I have no, but just talk about how that affects your heart. Well, actually uh, neurons are all over your body. They're not just in your head. In fact, you probably have more neurons in your, in your tummy, uh, you know, than anywhere. But there are what they don't call them neurons, but there's a, a fairly new science in the last 20 years, which is fairly new. They call neurocardiology. And they found what, what they're calling metabytes or something like that. I forget the title. Uh, that are like little neurons and they hold memory. So when, when, when you take an information that gets written on your heart on a molecular level, it really does get written in your heart. You're holding that memory. So, uh, and it affects every system in your body. You have 11 different systems in your body from your respiratory system to your skeletal system to your endocrine system, which is your hormones, all of it. Your neurons are rushing in and out of there throughout all of it. And so it is literally mind over matter. And going back to the speaking, that's a, that's a whole, that's a whole, I could do a whole thing. <laughs> But there is quantum energy behind our words, meaning they affect our environment. Think of putting a paintbrush in your mouth and everything you say is painting your environment in your future, everything. Because what you speak, what is it? I forget uh, what scripture that says out of the mouth uh, is a man, Proverbs, is it Proverbs um, 23? Yes. Okay. Uh, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That is true. What you speaking, I had to tell a friend one time, uh, they were complaining and complaining and unfortunately they, they were here, they were stuck in their story. And I said, I love you, but I'm gonna tell you the problems you're having is because of what's coming out of your mouth, not because of anything else that you've created. People will say, well, I'm worried about ABC. And I'll say, well, has ABC happened? No, well then why are you prophesying it? <laughs> Speak truth, go back to high noon, God says, I can do all things that strength that you know, he strengthens me to do all things. So, you know, that's the reconceptualization. That's going back to high noon. But we do have there is energy behind our words. It affects our environment. There are some great studies that show experiments where people had spoken life into either plants or rice or even water. There's a study out there with water. And they froze it at the time that they spoke to it. And one showed uh, when you spoke life into it, beautiful crystals, like gorgeous, beautiful snowflakes. When they spoke death into the other, it looked cancerous and it looked mm -hmm. sick and evil. And and so there is absolute energy behind our words. So. Wow. And so the Bible also um, says, don't worry about tomorrow. And I think God had a purpose in that to keep our thoughts in the present because take on another day our mind tends to wonder it gives an opportunity and by the way i love that word opportunity i use it all the time <laughs> it's one of my favorite words um god always gives us opportunities to partner with him to choose how we think and what we speak and and all that so that's i think that is why he wants us to stay in today so we don't trouble ourselves with um rehearsing things in our mind you know and, and and the other thing too is uh, the great thing about how God wired us. Um, I love that word optimum bias. So you have an optimistic attitude. God wired us to be optimistic. And what's great about it is every night your brain, uh, unlike all the myths, your brain does not shut down at night. It continually works. But what God does is just like a computer. Sometimes you know how you need to reboot your computer because it needs to refresh. Well, God gives us that ability at night. So he reboots our computer because those neurons have what they call neurotransmitters. They're like little mini computers going, translating that signal back and forth. And they get rebooted every night. So if you look in scripture in Lamentations, uh, let me see, Lamentations 3.23, where God says he wires us for, with new fresh mercies every day. He's giving us little mini computers new every day. 
right? Every single morning we have fresh mercies. Yes. And so you, you are rebooted and you get to start again, you know, and under his grace, go back to high noon. You get to start at high noon. <laughs> So can you touch on a little bit about the Horton Hears, um, that whole who by Dr. Seuss book? Yeah, just touch on that a little I bit. Love Dr. Seuss. I love Dr. Seuss. Uh, uh, his story, he has a great moral compass story. His writing is moral compass. I love, I love him. I used to write all my own books for my daughter. <laughs> um, but what I love about this particular, I actually use a couple of his stories in my teaching, but one of them is Horton Hears a Who, and it, obviously it's an elephant who, who hears something on a dust ball. And of course, elephants with their hearing is magnified more than ours, hears something inside it. And it turns out there's this little city, a whole world that exists on this dust ball. Well, everybody around him, you know, the, the neighborhood nosy body notices he's going crazy and starts getting a coup form against him, throw him away because he's crazy. So he's trying to convince these people, I promise you there's a whole city and they're like, you've lost your mind. <laughs> And so finally, at the end of the story, he convinced them because somehow they were able to get out that they exist. And so this, we are here, we are here. Well, I think about that story because years ago when I was, I was showing uh, one of those uh, molecular videos that I looked at is called uh, the, the Makings of an Inner White Blood Cell. And it was done through the study of Harvard or Yale, I forget one of the two universities. And what it does is it magnetized, goes in on a molecular level and looks inside just one cell, one of those cells. Now, this was before I knew all of this that God had brought me to the point of knowing the science piece is I'm looking at that. And it was like Horton Hears a Who, because I knew the story of Horton Hears a Who. And it was like this little city inside this little cell. So if you look at this cell, this uh, video, it's called uh, The Inner Workings of a White Blood Cell. It's a little tiny cell that the eye cannot see. There's a whole world and how God mechanisms work through stuff. When I saw that film, I saw it in church actually, I started to cry, weep, thinking how magnificent and majestic is our God. Yeah. Oh, I'll never lose my wonder, never. And, and so, and then later <laughs> I found out about the molecular part. So it's interesting that journey that God has taken me through to show me all of this. Wow, truly fascinating, truly fascinating. And you were talking about catchphrases. What are those? Well, catchphrases I use a lot in, in my talking. And one of them, as I mentioned earlier, people get stuck in their story. That I'd ask the Holy Spirit to, to give me language um, to talk even on a secular realm. You know, what can I say just to bring people to the truth, right? So uh, the catchphrases is people get stuck in their story. So. Sometimes they're stuck here. We all get stuck here, but people really get stuck here sometimes. Um, and um, it's more going on inside their head than what's going on around them. Um, one of the other catches I, 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 I use a lot, catchphrases is, we don't take time to stop and think about what we're thinking about. So if you look at all the Nobel Prize winners, a lot of them were deep thinkers. Aristotle was a deep thinker. God wired us to deep thinking and we've gotten as a society far away from that. So I have scripture for that too. Uh, let me find the deep thinking scripture. <laughs> um, I wanna say it's, um, oh, I had it ready, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Psalms 139, you've been desired for deep intellectual thought. God wired us to get quiet when God says be still and when we spend time with him each and every day. He wired us to have deep thought. You know, we're, we're the, the enemy, the, the strategy of the enemy is to distract us. And that's exactly what's going on. I see more of the pattern now of the distractiveness and all these labels that we put on that distractiveness, like labels of ADHD and PA, PD, PCD. And some of that I understand, and there is a, a scientific component to it. And yes, some people really, it is a true struggle. But I also know that truth is over struggle. And the Romans 12 is there for a reason. <laughs> so I know the truth and I believe and I've seen it and I've studied case studies of people coming through therapies of understanding this truth of coming out of Alzheimer's, coming out of depression, coming out of uh, dementia even uh, because of understanding this truth, the powerful, powerful truth. But it's uh, one last thing I want to mention real quick that I, I don't want to forget to say is 
Here's why mindsets are important to understand. These mindsets, remember they're chemical based, right? Chemical. There's an emotion which is in a chemical attached to that thought. These chemicals get passed on to the ovary and the sperm to the next generation. Wow. That's big. And that also is scripture. And uh, that goes, it, it goes on to the next generation. Um, and so you look back on your, you know, your ancestry, <laughs> you know, I can, I can tell you in my family, I can, I can identify now certain mindsets that we have in our family and, and, and some are mild, some are, you know, need the Holy spirit more, <laughs> but essentially we all have them. We pass on our mindset to the next generation. That is powerful. That is something we need to think about through our words. What, what are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you taking in through music, through TV? All of that affects your perspective and your thought process. You know, mm -hmm. how much time are you spending in truth? So wow. I love how you, what I love about you so much is how you connect all of this to the Bible. Because God gave us um an example an instruction book and he created us with every single thing that we need to, to to sustain our lives on this earth in a healthy state even though you know we're in this world but not of this world and he gives us the tools to be able to do that yes yeah. i love that i love how you do that well um Tell us about your ministry, The Journey. Explain to us what that's about and um, how it came about. Well, you know, I actually unofficially started the journey, doing The Journey 20 years ago when God stole, showed me through vision what to do for these kids. Well, I finally became official a couple of years ago, The Journey. And The Journey, the name The Journey came about is because <laughs> you're going to laugh at me, but <laughs> I'm a big, uh, I like analogies and I, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. <laughs> So, you know, the, oh, oh. Goes on a journey. Lord, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So Frodo goes on a journey and, and it just, I just love that story. But, and there's actually a lot of scriptural, you know, references there in, in the, in the, in the, the Lord of the Rings. But so that's where the journey came from because everybody has their own journey. Something I dealt with for 30 years in education is no one understands that. Uh, these, these young adults are coming in thinking that you know, they're stressed out because they can't figure out what, what path to jump on. They don't realize they ha already have a predestined path. And so, and it's their own, just like the thumbprint. There's a reason why they have their own combination of thinking. God has purpose behind that to do what they were purposed to do according to his will, right? So it's getting them, it, it, part of the journey is having them walk through the journey. I, eat, I meet individual with clients and or I meet with uh, groups. Uh, I do some speaking engagements. Uh, to me, it's like whoever opened the door because I want to get out this message. That's that's what it is to me. And some of them need the one on one. So I take them through a series of kind of assessments and assessments are misunderstood. Their job is to not label you or tell you what you should do. And all of those are all a big myth. Uh, it's uh, getting them to understand what gifts God did put in them and 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 uh, that they're probably using them already and not know it. And, and so just helping them frame what God already has given them and talking, taking them through a three or four different process meeting time of, of helping them through that. And I have kids that are still getting a hold of me 20 years later. I, I, you never really let go, but we're always really supposed to meet, you know, at least three or four times, you know, potentially. But I also do speaking engagements, talking about this very thing. And um, uh, so that's what the journey is. Uh, we, we work with, uh, we're working uh, currently right now, I'm working on some projects with working with single parents. And uh, my big goal is to get into uh, some of the Hispanic communities. I need to get a little better with my Spanish. <laughs> but I do have people who are good interpreters for that. <laughs> Well, you know how important it is that we understand our identity and who we are in Christ. Yeah. So can you tell us how the journey helps people find their identity? Well, I simply lay out the truth before them. What I do is I can, uh, what I'm grateful for is that the Holy Spirit is showing me where the lies are coming from and what those lies are. 
and and young adults are being lied to about who they are in Christ. They're lost, they're stressed because they're being lied to. Because what they've got going on up here is they're being lied to about who they are in Christ. So mine is just to pose that in front of them. And I think what gets their attention is I understand the lies and I can pull those out in front of them because I know that's exactly what they're thinking. And, and, and you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of like a bottom line girl. I'll tell them, I said, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, what, what are you fearful of? We say in psychology, what you don't understand, you fear. And that is absolutely true if you don't understand it. You're mm -hmm. fearful. And so we have a lot of young adults walking in fear. Well, my, my job is to pull out that lie and say, you're being lied to. And here's the truth. You know, you have the mind of Christ. You can do everything that you were purposed to do. He gave you everything you need to do what he has purposed you to do. And so mind's calling out the lie. That's what the journey is. Calling out those lies and pulling them and have, giving them a greater understanding of who they are in Christ. Wow, that's awesome. And I heard I heard a teaching um, yesterday. I was listening to a teaching. And the man said, when you understand something, when you come to understanding, then that seed remains. It actually stays within us. Yes, I'm glad you said that. Because what happens is we're very habitual people. So, you know, we take the same road all the time. We drink the same soda or whatever. We're pretty habitual. We get Our body gets used to something very quickly. Well, when you learn to reconceptualize, that's why the Bible tells us to pray unceasingly, right? We want to all constantly be in the word, being at high noon. Because when we do that, uh, it, does, it takes more than 60 days. It takes like 90 days. But when you continually do that and, and be, in, you have to be intentional. You're going to mess up, but you have to be intentional every single moment. And when you're intentional, that can become habitual, like brushing your teeth. You don't think about brushing your teeth. You just do it, you know? And so can this mindset of doing things habitual, spending time with God in the morning, you know, putting up your red stop sign when a bad thought comes in, being intentional. That's, you know, that's what we need to do like all the time. So I think that's a good point because um, right now where we're living at, what we're going through, so many people are in fear and it's fear. because of what they're watching and they're filling their mind. Yes. Yeah. And, Yes. And so I'm glad you brought up this point because, um, you know, if you're going to be watching, you know, the TV and all of sh the negative shows and, you know, just the um, the toxic stuff that's on TV right now, it corrupts our mind. And it's it it takes that. I, I keep looking at that that dead branch. I mean, you're just deadening. You're not having a healthy mind. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. Depression has gone up. Suicides have gone up. It's because these people are being lied to. Yes. Uh, just absolutely lied to. I have, yes. I'm, I'm very, I, I don't like to use the word passion, but I, I do have a passion, obviously. You can see that. Uh, yeah. You know, I lost a brother to suicide. And so, and I'm so mad. That anger of being mad that he was lied to, you know, it, it also plays a big part of this. Uh, it didn't happen, uh, you know, it was about four years ago, but it, it's like, I'm tired of the lies. I'm calling the lies to the table. This is the truth. We serve yeah. a mighty, loving, wonderful yeah. God. And that's yeah. the truth. And so yeah. that's the message. I so feel like is. that what happened to your brother has fueled your uh, anger at the enemy, that you are tired of the deceit and you're ready to bring the truth to the yes. body of Christ. Yes, I have Absolutely. lost a lot of friends. Yes. Friends, so, friends. Yes. So um, where do you see the journey in five years? Have you written a book? And is there a book in your future? Because I'm kind of sensing one if there's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's funny that you said that because when I lost my brother, I started writing. The Holy Spirit just had me write, write, write. And one night he had me up all night. I didn't even realize I was up all night. And I just started writing. And uh, I didn't know I was writing a book. And the Holy Spirit told me, well, there's your book. Well, <laughs> Well, I really just uh, kept writing and really it has to do it, it. Believe it or not, it's called the journey and it, it already has a title It already has a format, but I, I have such a long way to go. <laughs> but I started writing it in that season of, of, of kind of my journey walking from childhood until till now and kind of the places where God has met me and shown me those different things and kind of the journey he is taking me on 
and how uh, I forget the story in the Bible where he says, my God was here. Um, I, I'm having a, a brain stop right now, but uh, okay. you know, recognizing that God was in this place. What scripture am I thinking about? Um, um, how can I not know my God was here or something? Uh, I forget the story. I'm sorry. That's okay. But uh, uh, but anyway, uh, now see, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about writing. You were talking about writing a book and where you see yourself in five years. Yes. So the book uh, is in progress. I'm not sure. I I'm actually uh, retiring at the end of the year, so I have lots of time to write now <laughs> next year. So I'm kind of excited about that. Writing that also. I really, uh, we're going to have a launch party for the journey uh, sometime next year. I have a daughter getting married, so we're trying to work all that out. And then um, I also see really this, the Holy Spirit showed me when I started this, that this was going to be big, not big for me, not big, get me out of the picture. This was going to be big because the need is huge that people need to know that they're being lied to. And so I'm like, I'm ready, Lord. Uh, I, I put some things in place. One of them was retirement so that I could give this my full attention because that's how excited I am about what the Holy Spirit's going to do with this ministry in the future. Mm -hmm. And and I say, you open the door, let me come in. I'll start talking. So, um, and I'll start working with people, whatever that takes. So it's, I want to get into the Hispanic communities. Um, I want to look at, I'm going to be connecting with some local commerce groups uh to stay connected with small business and so i'm, I'm really excited the launch party is coming probably sometime in april or may of next year and uh we're just going to keep building it i'm like show me what's next holy spirit just put it on the plate let's let's do this i'm ready to go so so if people wanted to contact you and sign up to walk through this journey uh what would they need to do and is there a fee there is uh currently right now you can go to startyourjourney.net uh, and uh, you can request a consultation and or a speaking engagement. Um, uh, there is a fee for uh, meeting with the consultation. We typically meet three times. Um, and then uh, there's also, though, some scholarship money, too, that we can look at, too. So I have scholarship money aside for, for those that, you know, may not be able to do that. So um, you want me to tell you how much a fee? I don't know. <laughs> but yes, there is a fee. So I typically charge about $100 a session. There's usually three sessions. Um, the money all goes right back into the ministry and the operational costs, because you know it, it takes money to run a, a nonprofit. That's where it all goes back to, and then back into the community. So it's kind of like a rotating fountain. <laughs> but yeah. So it's just, um this site that you just mentioned is this where people can go so into your ministry do you have okay can you share a little bit about that how people can participate and partner with you well there's a couple different ways on my website there is a donate button at the very bottom of the page there's three pages to my website and i want to say it's on the last page but right now i don't remember <laughs> but it is on one of the pages at the very bottom right hand corner you can say donate now um, the other thing also is, is that, um, uh, you know, if someone is open to, uh, I speak at, uh, I'm open to speak at churches. I've spoken at some churches before, and essentially we just ask for a love offering, um, just to go toward the operational cost for the journey, but I'll go through the series of, I do a whole, a whole speaking engagement on this puppy right here. <laughs> Uh, I really like talking more about this one. <laughs> so, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll have that speaking engagement. Um, and then so uh, open to, you know, hoping we can get some speaking engagements going so we can sew it right back into the ministry again. Um, and then uh, hopefully get some more clients that are interested. And, and just to know that we do have some scholarship money to set aside for those. That would I'm just thinking of, um, you know, when you have a healthier mind, people are more productive and that equates to a business or a corporation being more productive. And I'm just, I'm just saying, if there's anybody out there as a viewer that has a corporation, um, a business that 
uh, you know, I would really consider having Lori come in and speak in your, your company, in your business to encourage people and educate them about the mind. Because when people have the right mindset, when they know who they are, they walk in more authority. And I, I just believe that they, uh, not only do they walk in more power in the body of Christ, but they'll be more productive for your company. Absolutely. And then it's a win situation. Absolutely. And, and it, it, it'll change the atmosphere. Education. Yes, it absolutely does. I worked in educational atmosphere for many, many years. One time I was in a very toxic atmosphere years ago, and the Holy Spirit told me, quit talking about the problem. And so I started talk, I started prophesying. Thank you, Lord, for the great work you're doing in this people life. Every morning I would speak in tongues. I would walk into that environment. And let me tell you, it may not have fixed the problems, but it absolutely changed my environment in that moment. It yes. changed the whole environment. I started making connections and building relationships at that point. When I started prophesying in this toxic environment, instead of paying attention, all the things that people were doing wrong. So it completely changed the atmosphere for me. Well, I'm just going to put the word out there that if you own a business, a corporation or a company, and you know that there is a negative atmosphere um, just because of maybe what people are speaking or saying, um, we all know what goes on in offices and it does create an environment of negativity. And I highly encourage you um, to get in touch with Lori for some consultation on how to shift the atmosphere and create a positive environment because um, God is a God of order. And when you have a positive environment, God wants your business to succeed, you know, because he loves to have favor and bless people, you know, also to bless others. Right. So um, what you're doing can have such a huge impact, not just on an individual, but homes and schools and businesses because if you think yeah. about it everything starts with a thought everything that's right. in life starts with a thought yeah wow that's awesome well we thank you so much lori for coming on truly you are amazing i'm so thankful that god creates minds like yours that have such a heart such a love to do stuff like that because we're all created individually and um you know what reading and trying to learn all that that my mind couldn't grasp it but i'm so glad that we have loving beautiful people as yourself that are obedient to god and doing what god has called you to do and i just know god's gonna flood the doors open in your ministry and help so many people all over, not only the nation, but the world. So we just, we thank you so much for coming on here on Porch Talk. And um, we're going to end, we always end with a prayer. So if you're okay with it, I'm going to end with prayer. And then Kim has some announcements that we're going to end with. And um, we just thank you so much for your time, Lori. Yes. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Thank you. Yes. All right. So um, let's go into prayer. So, Father God, we just thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for this time with this beautiful daughter of yours. Everything that you're doing in and through her life, Lord Jesus, her her mind, her beautiful mind, Lord Jesus, um, her ministry, Lord Jesus, her love for you, her obedience, Lord Jesus, to follow you through all these years and what you're leading her to do and her purpose and her destiny, Lord Jesus. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, protection over her in this time. I pray for opportunities for her to be able to get out there, Lord, and share the Share the truth and eradicate the darkness, eradicate the evil, because, Lord, we know that you created the mind to be a healthy mind and you created people, Lord Jesus, to speak the truth, to teach people, Lord Jesus, your word and how to renew the mind and walk in the identity that you called them to. And Lord Jesus, she has a kingdom purpose in doing this. And I just pray favor over her open doors. Lord Jesus, over her. I just pray blessings over her and that you continue um, to put people in her path to get the word out there, Lord Jesus. And I also pray for every single one who's watching the porch today. I pray over the holidays, Lord Jesus, that you protect them from any illness or negativity, Lord Jesus. I pray for healing and restoration, Lord Jesus, as during the holidays, 
sometimes um, we can be going through so much, Lord Jesus. As we mentioned earlier, people lose loved ones and the holidays, Lord Jesus, can be so hard. And we replay in our mind, Lord Jesus, those images, those thoughts, and the remembering of what happened during that time, Lord Jesus. So I just pray that you take people to the scriptures, as Lori mentioned, to renew their mind, to know who you are, to receive your love and your comfort, Lord Jesus, so that they can um, turn their mind. It's never too late. No matter where you're at with the Lord, it is never too late to take your mind from a dead looking tree to a tree of life, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you so much for Lori, for our time um, with her on the porch talk. And as always, Lord, we just always give you praise and thanks. And um, it's always to your glory, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, just a few closing remarks. Uh, we want to, to, Talk about Dignata. The they're, they're having a jewelry fundraiser. Uh, Dignata was a few weeks ago. Uh, Dave and Maria Skinner were on. This is their daughter. And um, just talk a little bit about Dignata. Um, it do you, do you want to have a little intentional Christmas shopping with a purpose that impacts women globally? You can go to Dignata Jewelry Party in person or online, and all proceeds, it benefits the human trafficking. Dignata empowers victims of human trafficking and exploitation into freedom by giving them a dignified means of financial stability. They offer them employment in Dignata jewelry, creating the avenue to, to leave exploitation. And their jewelry is high end and timeless. And all the materials, um, they use the best materials for this jewelry, semi-precious stones, silver, custom-made uh, Swarovski crystals, which I absolutely love. Um, but the best thing about it is each jewelry piece is a woman's path to freedom or achievement of, her, of it. Um, Dignata jewelry pieces come with the name of the woman who made it and the location where it was made, making you a part of her story. So we are going to post online uh, or at the bottom of the comments, the location and the time of this. Um, it's free of charge. You can shop the jewelry there. They're going to have finger foods, prizes, and even an optional cookie exchange. So it sounds like a really neat thing. Also, um, we want to mention um, last week we had God's Garage. Well, they right now are collecting for Toys for Tots. And we know that there are children out there if um, that may not have a Christmas this year. So they are collecting for Toys for Tots. So if you um, feel led and pull on your heart, God is pulling on your heart to go and um, buy a toy or toys, you can find God's Garage um, information on the War Room on Wheels website are on the Facebook page. There's a lot of posts about it. And we'll put their address in the comments of where you can go and drop the toys off. Also, don't forget about Porch Talk and uh, sending in your holiday porch pictures. We would love to see one of your pictures on our background of your porch. So send in your pictures so we can see, have your porch on our backdrop. And then last thing is next week, we will have Juan Martinez as our guest on Porch Talk. And he has a new book out. And I just want you to, I want to tell you, I've read it. It's amazing. It's beyond the yellow brick road. And it is awesome. So join us next week. and hear him talk about his uh his testimony and his journey so um we want to again thank you Lori, for being on porch talk and for joining us today and so we just want to say goodbye to everyone we bless you and we uh ask we just pray that you have an amazing week goodbye bye-bye yes. everybody have a blessed week <laughs>